My grandpa's like, he ran with Bumpy Johnson and them. You know what I'm saying? So my grandpa's, he was a boxer. He owned the flower shop. He was pretty much like, when all the black gangsters, they had funerals, weddings, whatever occasions was going on and need flowers, they came to his flower shop. You know what I'm saying? So, and he was a part of that. Like, if you ever watched that movie Hoodlum or you watched The Godfather of Harlem or um, Netflix, like, my grandfather was really in that loop. Like, know what I'm saying? Right. He was a gangster for real. Like, I ain't even jacking, I'm a gangster, but my grandpa's was a gangster. I don't know, man. I heard a lot of gangster about you, bro. I a mean, a lot of gangster. I, I, that's for other people to say, but I'm saying, like, I'm definitely not, a, I'm not in a gangster mind, not anymore. mind state not now. Anymore. But yeah, I did some, but Back I don't even know if that's gangster no more, bro. Like, that's ignorance. All them stories I just said, like, that's, that's fly, flying through the, the wall. That's not gangster, my nigga, almost. In the infant, like, know what I'm saying? Like, that's not gangster, nigga. Ear, like, his ear going for the, like, every time you look in the mirror, that's my fault. Like, know what I'm saying? That's not, I, like, I be feeling bad for, shit. like, some, I told niggas that one day, like, like, not, not like, not like, uh, like the person, but I told, like, friend of mine, I was like, damn, I be feeling, I did to people, like, know what I'm saying? Like, right. I was standing next to a nigga, right, and took a picture with a nigga recently. Right? And shook his hand and he's so happy to see me. And he don't even know. I'm the nigga, I can't tell the whole story because he gonna know, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm the nigga that was in his crib that had him on the floor. Like, you <laughs> know what I'm saying? Like, he don't, damn, I said. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, nah, if I say anymore, cause there was a lot of niggas on the floor. So, right. most niggas get on right? right? But I, I, I really had this person like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wanted, the story so fly, I wish I could tell Let's it. Let's hear it. Let's hear no. it. Let's hear it. Because it's, 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 I can't, still, you I can't, the book coming out. I can't tell it till I make closure out. with the person. Because I, I respect this person so much, right? Yeah. He's a, he's an older dude that I always look, like, we looked up to him getting money and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we respected this dude. And I got a lot of, so before I tell a story on camera right. about him and he, realize on camera, yeah. I should at least have this conversation with him and be like, yo, bro, that was me, and I apologize. Man, if I do don't, that- You don't watch social media, bro, come on. <laughs> I'ma just say this though, like, the nigga was lit. Like, right. niggas came through the door, naked right. money all over, like, it was some Scarface shit, like, that shit, right. like, that's, that's all I'ma say, like, so was lit, like, <laughs> that shit. In the bed, like, ah, like, <laughs> oh, I definitely, I, I'm gonna have a, I, I told too much. I'm, I'm gonna tell, bro. Next time, word that, word to my pops. Next time I see him, I'm gonna apologize for that. And I feel like we all grew up. Yeah. And, and I know he not even in that space. He is. I think he'll respect me saying that and apologizing, my nigga. How much y'all, y'all took that day? <sighs> we took, we took a couple beers. And we got out of there quick because the, the females was making mad noise. They was right. OD, ah, yeah, 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 right. yelling, you know what I'm saying? Um, so we just took like whatever. Again, he had he had a little, I, that probably was personal that they was using. Right. But whatever the was on the table, we took that shit. We was trying to find, because son got it, got it, right? Mm -hmm. But we didn't even have enough time to get to it, to it. We right. did get like a barrel of... And then the barrel it had a little bit of it, like, but it was mad barrel telling too much. It was mad in the crib, right? right and right. we could, we would have had to look through everything, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we yeah. didn't have that much time, like, and we literally, like, right after this happened, <laughs> like, we used to do this type of, we used to niggas, right? Yeah. Then come downstairs and be chilling with you while you're telling the police you got <laughs> Same clothes. Like, oh, we're, no, we go change our clothes, uh. bro. We go change our clothes. Come back down. Because we want to know if you if you knew it was us. Like, you right. know what I'm saying? We be standing next to you while you're telling the police a description of the person who <laughs> you. Like, damn, that shit happened? Word, my nigga? <laughs> like, <laughs> right, no, no. But that's not gangster, though. That's foul. Shit. That's greaseball shit, uh, bro. Listen, bro, listen. The same story you're telling is the same story niggas coming home that did 30 years and now telling, writing books, or starting their podcast telling. I feel so you. that is gangsta. You know what I'm saying? I go for that. Uh, just thank God, we're, I just we're, didn't we're get caught. We're talking about like, your past saying? life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's all that is, man. But yeah, man, this, this, your life story could be a movie, could be a book, you know what I'm saying? 
So you can't just give that up and say it wasn't gangster. I go for that. You know I just when I when I'm when I say that though, like I guess the definition of gangster, if it's that, then I guess it's gangster. Yeah. But I'm at a place where again, I'm not cool with super glorifying. Right. So what I think is what I think is gangster now is not what I thought is gangster then. You know what I'm saying? What's gangster now to me is taking care of your family, providing, like, you know what I'm right. saying? Like that's a gangster to me. Like, not saying I don't still respect niggas in the hood and what they do but my mentality and where i'm at right yeah it's just a total different mind frame so my definition of gangster may not be the same as somebody still in the hood busting moves i heard this story of you guys taking somebody's chain in a club and then try to on them in the toilet how true is that <laughs> <clears throat> my mom's door got over that like you know what i'm saying that incident yeah they my mom's door. I'm not bragging, right? And I'm not glorifying it, but I'm showing y'all how crazy my life was. I remember a time one of my mans pulled up. It's we in back of 240, chilling. Good day like this, smoking, drinking. My mans pull up in the car. He popped the trunk. It's a but his eyes is not covered. Right. He's looking at us. Right. Like soon as you open us, he's looking at us like <laughs> like I'm like, yo, bro, what are you doing? Like, you wailing. He asked us, can we hide him in the closet for a week? Sound like somebody I know. It's like a movie, but it's like, bro, who does this? Who pulls up with some Not even blindfolded, nothing. Right. You got him. You just showing everybody, like, he's a toy. Like, this right. is your pet. Like, Craig asking us, can we hold him for a week? Right. Like, Bro, is you out of your mind? Right, right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but this is the mentality. This is how ignorant we was as young youth. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's why I understand our youth now. I get it. You know what I'm right. saying? I was there. Right. Okay, so speaking of being there, right? Um, there's a line in one of your songs where you said uh, you ran down on Joe Button to get to Royce. Okay. Talk about that situation. Well, I didn't. I didn't say I ran down on Joe Buttons to get the voice. I think I. I think in the line, I said we was running. I forgot how the line went, but I, I'm pretty sure in the line I was saying that we was running down on Joe Buttons. But I was bigging Royce up, right? Okay. Because Royce actually stood there with Joe Buttons. You know well, what I'm saying. Well, well, go back to the beginning. Like I'm gonna tell the whole story. Yeah. And this was a time like all of this was because we was riding with Inspector Deck. You know what I'm saying. So right. Inspector Deck. It, it, at that at that time, he's super big, bro. Pause, like you know what I'm saying, and we we just support everything he's doing. So it was the issue with Joe Buttons was Method Man, uh, Inspector Deck, Wu Tang, and stuff like that. But being that we was associated with Inspector Deck, we took personal too. So we showed up at Rock the Bells with Inspector Deck with intentions of whatever Inspector Deck want to do. If he want to pop it off, we popping it off with him. You know what I'm saying, um. We got there, we start building with meth. The energy is up. Like, yeah, everybody's looking for Joe Buttons. When we seen Joe Buttons that day, um, Joe Buttons was saying, oh, he's a great talker. Right, right. <laughs> he started talking his way out of, cause dudes, everybody wanted to put their hands on him, but everything he was saying was the right thing. And you know, meth is a good dude. Like, the next day you see it rolled over, it didn't work so good for him, but meth is a good dude and I know meth, like, so, it, it, and, and most people, like, when you, when you run it down on somebody and they like, nah, chill, I don't want no problem. It's like, it's kind of hard to stay. Like, you feel me? So I understand how that, how that day went, right? But in the midst of that, I respected Royce 5'9 because throughout the whole situation, he stood right there next to Joe Buttons. You know what I'm saying? So if anything would have popped off, anything would have happened, he'd have had to hold his mans down. And I respect that because that's something I would have did. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's the utmost respect for Royce. Like, never no disrespect. I don't know him personally, but just off of his actions, like, you respect, you, you, you respect somebody who's respectable, right? right. So he's a respectable person. You know what I'm saying? He stood there next to his men's and he was surrounded by a bunch of other dudes. They was clearly outnumbered and he was ready to rock with his guy. Pause. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I respect that. So it wasn't no disrespect to Royce. On the other hand, I saw um, Joel, Crooked Eye wasn't there, or I didn't see Crooked Eye, you know what I'm saying? Um, Joel Ortiz was in the corner, he wasn't standing too far from me, like, probably like, I don't know, maybe five feet, four feet away from me, but security had 
It was two, two security he was standing behind. And even standing behind the security, he had like a super nervous, scared face on. I know it's an intense situation, so of course you're supposed to be on. But it's a difference between looking on point right. and looking like, please don't hurt me. And I could be wrong. I don't Not know. Well. Like, that's what I felt. Like, I felt like he was giving the please don't hurt me type of <laughs> you know what I'm saying like he was standing behind security. He didn't stand with his mans while everybody was pressing his mans. Only Royce did. You know what I'm saying he's behind security, and he's talking all of this extra tough. Like that's where he lose me. And I like dude. I think pause. I, I think dude is a dope rapper, right? Yeah. I think he he's 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 incredible with the bars. Right. But I can't believe none of that. After I see you scared to stand next to your man when dudes is pressing him. I can't really respect the gum bars, that you gonna do anything to anybody. I don't feel like you never was that person just off of that incident. I could be wrong, I don't know him all his life, but in that moment of a critical situation, he didn't look like he handled it well. Right. And I can't respect that, you know what I'm saying? Right. Now, let's talk about, uh, <clears throat> because I'm hearing these stories, right? Mm -hmm. And I wanna hear them from you. And I, and I think people wanna hear them from you. Yes. Right? There are a few stories where your songs are maybe uh, a hook to one of your songs were stolen. Okay. Right? I remember hearing a story about Joel Santana, Mike Check 1212. That's a fact. That you actually had that hook, but 718. Yes. Talk about that. So we had a, a, a mixtape that we put out, and on that mixtape, I did so much. I forgot what mixtape was on, right? But on one of the mixtapes that we released, we had a song, Mike Check 1718, Mike Check 1718, just like his joint pulls, uh, Mike Check 1212, Mike Check 1212, right? Same, same concept, but the difference is like, you would say like, that's something that anybody could have thought of, right? But right. we was actually, in that time, like, again, we not artists that just hit the studio, we really, got out here and, and been a lot of different places, right? When Jay-Z say, uh, find a small town and lock it down, we, we really was on that at one point, you know what I'm saying? And this is how we used to bump into other people who was getting money and doing the same type of things. And it just happened so, uh, you know, not the rappers of Dipset, but, you know, um, some, of, some of the guys that, whatever, Entourage. right? Entourage. Yeah, however you want to put it. Um, I'm telling my story. I don't really feel cool with telling everybody else's story. That's for them to tell, right? right? But you interact with different people, and we met some of these people, right? And in the, in the, in the process of meeting them, they, they promoting the music they do. We promoting the music we do. So they giving us their CD. We giving them, they bumping our, our, our CD. We bumping, like, you know what I'm saying? It's love, right? right? But then we hear the 212 song. It's like, same format, you know what I'm saying? Um, what was the gap in between you guys giving them the CD? Months. Okay. Like months, like probably like within a six month span. Like within a six month span of us giving them that CD, that song came out, you know what I'm saying? The the mic check, um, it happens. Like, you know what I mean? We wasn't even like, I don't know, was I, I probably was upset at that time, to be honest. I probably did feel some kind of way. Right. Again, I'm in a different place now, right? Um, but yeah, I probably did feel some kind of way. And matter of fact, I did because I said a lot of different things in my music. You know what I mean? If you go back after that, like you might what? hear some shots. Um, I just, I was a wild boy. I just, I took shots at everybody, bro. Anybody I felt offended me, right. like I was cool with, I felt like I could rap just as good as you, right? So right. I'm not scared of you in rapping. Right. And I'm tough too, so right. I'm not scared of you in that way. So I ain't never really feel like there was no competition or nobody that I wouldn't go face to face with if you put me in the ring. Like, you right. know what I'm saying? I just always felt that way, you know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, like what was one of the shots you took at jo Joel? I mean, I don't think it, it wasn't particularly him, right? But right. I might have took some dip set shots, you okay. know what I'm saying? Um, a, a, as an overall team, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm being honest, like, I probably didn't just clearly say it, like, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it was, I, I, I know, I could remember certain music, and, I, and again, it's, it's so much music, I can't pinpoint the particular lines, right? right? But there was a time where after that, you know, like I did, I did, um, 
I lashed out on a lot of people, bro. I was, a, a lot of stuff was kind of uncalled for, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, we was the warriors. If anybody said warriors, I was tight. Like, right. nah, we the warriors. Like, because everybody was doing it on some rap shit, but we really, I really got that on my hand. Like, you know what I'm saying? I really put on for 240 Park Hill Avenue. At that time, that's my mentality, so it's like, Anybody just saying warriors, like, nah, you ain't no warrior. You ain't do nothing to be a warrior. Like, right. so that's just, again, young mentality, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, I heard stories of back in the days how rappers used to take, you know what I mean? From mixtapes and other people's album that didn't come out. You know, I think it was, it was normal back then because nobody was speaking up. <sighs> You know what I'm saying? That's still biting. Like, it, it nah, is. it's pause. Like, that's not, I don't think that was never valid. Like, I never. But did you did you go any further? Like, did you try to, you know, get to Joel's and be like, yo, they got that from me. Your people's got that from me. Like, that's I, my actual hook right there. I mean, the only connections we had at that time was we was all in the same place. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But by the time, six months later, we might not even been in that area no more. Like, you know what I'm saying? We burnt it down already. Mm -hmm. So we in a whole nother spot. Um, so we don't necessarily have no direct contacts to, you know what I'm saying? So, so was the concept of the song the same as yours or was his different? I mean, our bars wasn't the same, but it was the same. It was like, Mike Check 1212, that's repping Manhattan, right? right. Mike Check 1718, that's repping us. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's repping Staten Island. And it's like, not for nothing, the cadence, right? The right. cadence of it. Mike check one, two. Like you could say Mike check one, two, one, two. You might say it a million different ways, but the same exact way that he he finessed his hook is right. the same way my was. Like you know what I'm saying, like I'll send you a clip of I'll, you know what I'm saying the song. Maybe you could play it or something. You could play his shit and you could play that shit. You remember? And then people you can remember hear it. Uh, the first eight bars of your song? Nah. No. Bro. Okay. Again, you gotta, I, I got so much music, you gotta play the beat or for it to kick in for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's the only way I'm gonna re remember my bars. Like, especially old, old bars from back then. Like, you know what I'm right. saying? Okay, so for people who never heard of Fest Taylor, mm -hmm. what is three albums you would tell them, like, listen to, and this is like some of my best work? I mean, they gotta check Moneta because Moneta is the start of everything. Um, Moneta is is the beginning, so to even understand anything, you definitely have to start from there. Uh, I gotta throw Flight 10304 in there because it's the album that was like the album for me, supposedly, right? Right. Um, and that's I guess that's a good middle point. And then if I had to choose from like a later a later joint pause, uh, it would probably be like. One of the werewolves and statins, or it's it's up to debate too because it's like the the uh, the joint I dropped. Um, Hood famous. Hood famous. Know what I'm saying, but not though. I'm not even thinking of that. Know what I'm saying, I, cause I could say Buzz Killer. Like Buzz Killer is a lot of people's favorite, but I guess I would have to go with one of the werewolves and statins. I was gonna say like, but that's an EP. That's not even an album. So. Um, I can't even count that the the joint the album out the EP I was about to name, but yeah, it would probably be like the the Werewolf and Staten Three. I'm 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 really happy with that. Like you know what I'm saying, that shows the growth of where I'm going with it now. Like you know what I'm saying, I got a bunch of new music, well, two new projects that I'm about to do plus revamping. We spoke about something before that probably would never happen. It's crazy. We spoke in the last interview. We spoke about. A possible King Just Fest Taylor album that yeah, might not never that? that might not never come to light, man. I Why not? You got to interview Just about that, man. Uh, you okay, ask him so when you interview here. him. You're here. What what, what happened with that? I mean, this. I'm not. It's not creative disagreements, right? Because we work well. We created the project. We did it. I guess when it comes down when it came down to releasing the project, um, business. How we're gonna do it? We, we may see things differently. Like right. my vision for business and his vision for business. Um, and it just wasn't working out. And to be honest, I'm really disappointed in that situation because I felt like it was a waste of my time. You know what I'm saying? Um, waste of my time because we created something magnificent, bro. Like we did a project 
that super fire. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I set aside everything else I was doing just to help create something with the bro, right? right. So to, to come up with concepts, hooks, stuff that's going to uh, re reinvent us. You know what mm. I'm saying? Um, and I think I did my part very well of doing that, right? right. And the project came out great, bro. But now it's at a place where the world may never hear it. I may have to pick it apart and recreate it as a Fest Taylor project, not featuring King Just, you know what I'm saying? But half of the songs, not even half the songs, right? It's hard to do that when the, the whole concept of the project is catered around me and King Just. So half the songs that we got, I don't even know if I want to do by myself, like, you know what I'm saying? Because the vision and the concepts that I was thinking was like, this is something we doing. It's, it's to fit both of us, pause, like, you know what I'm saying? So I may just go back and you can't, refix you can't that try, whole you project. You try to up. work it out with him? I, I've tried, bro, but I don't got time and energy in my life. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? That's my, that's my boy piece. But I don't got the time and my energy to play tug of war. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just want to get money. I want to be happy. Right. I want to do music. I don't want to stress, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Anything that brings me stress in my life, I'm going that way. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it, it's crazy. I, I, I've been, a lot of people, a lot of people um, don't understand that, you know what I'm saying? And it's been causing me to have to distance myself from right. a lot of people that just don't get it, like, you know what I'm saying? But I'm cool with moving this way if you cool with staying over here, you know what I'm saying? Because this is not where I want to be. I know where I want to go, you know what I'm saying? Right. All right, so Jadakiss' second album comes out. You hear something on that album that sounds familiar. What was that? Jada Kiss, so we had the the wild song, it's crazy. And again, you would people would say like, cause I say this, we've had this conversation in the hood. People like, yo, he ain't steal your song. But bro, like <laughs> we was working with Phantom of the Beats, a producer who was shopping music to everybody. He did uh he did the magic stick for 50 Cent. Like the reason 50 Cent picked that beat is he didn't even hear that beat, right? Just as a beat, he heard it as a song. I song, I can't say, I'm not about to say 50 stole Magic Stick from us, no. If we didn't have no type of concept like that on the song. Right. We was just rapping bars on the song. But what we was doing on the song and him hearing the beat, he said, nah, I need that beat. Like, you know what I'm saying? And bro ended up selling the beat to 50 and Kim got on it, ended up coming one of the fucking biggest songs in the country type shit, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so this producer, Every time he's shopping beats, he's shopping our project at the same time. So he's always putting our music at the end. And he's shopping beats to Rough Riders, Jada Kiss and them and shit like that, right? right. And so we got a song called Why and my boy List, shout out to my boy List, Free List, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he he did the hook on some Why, like he did the hook first, then that's when we, we knew the concept of the song. So he did Why, just like how, but Jada Kiss really had a singer. Right. List is, just did it on some like, Harmony, hood harmony, you know what I'm saying? Um, right. Again, I send you both songs, you can compare them, right? So Liz does the hook, I go, I start writing my verse. I write my, everybody else's verse on the song wasn't really like Jada Kid's verse. Right. My verse was like that, like with the whys and why this, why that, why this, why that. I was doing that, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then next thing you know, they got the why song. They got the hook, similar to my boy hook with somebody else singing. And then he's doing the whole why this, why that concept through his verse, just like my verse, you know what I'm saying? Wow, wow. I mean, how did you feel when you hear that, man? Like, did you- I remember the song, I've, I've, I went and did the champ is here freestyle over this and Jada Kiss. What you said? <laughs> I sent it to you. I don't, you know, I told you. Uh, you gotta listen, man. Yeah. I'm not giving y'all nothing. Y'all gotta go make my numbers go up. Go, go look for that and view it and play it. And y'all tell me what y'all think. But it's called it. It's the it's Fest Taylor. The champ is here. It's on um the what I got what I got to lose mixtape. I'm on the cover with a fur coat. You know and I'm saying um real deal. Gil was alive then. It was a magical time, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I went right to the studio and I and I wrote I wrote some bars and, and, and I think I intro, I don't remember again, I don't remember all my bars, but my first two bars was like, yeah, Kiss stole my shit. Like <laughs> right, right. I clearly said that. Like, cause at that point I was tight. Like it, the the other thing that already happened. Right, the, the Santander, Santana, how you say his name? Like Santander? Santana. Santana, all right. Yeah, I be Santana. mixing it up with the bank shit. I like the bank better, no shit. Uh. <laughs> nah, no, for, no shot, no shades. But uh, anyway, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, 
I was pissed off at that moment, like, because I had already had one song stolen. And there's been other little incidents, too, like, a lot of other stuff I didn't speak about that I thought somebody took this from me, and I thought, like, people have been stealing from me for years, bro, because I've been an underdog, like... Like, what, else, what else do you think they took? Like, for, for years, back in the days, dudes used to always say I sounded like ghosts, right? right? But that really was my voice as a youngster, like, you know what I'm saying? I really, that wasn't me... Like, and to be honest, I might have been rapping before Ghostface, even though he's older than me. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I was in the hood rapping. I was known for putting in work. Like, my whole style was already constructed. So, I'm not saying Ghost stole my style, right. right? But for people to say that I sound like him used to offend me because I always been myself. Like, you know what I'm saying? I never... You know what I mean? And, and that was just me. Like, you know what I'm saying? As a, my voice still is like that if I... If I get excited, like, you know what I'm saying, I have that type of voice. Like, other people mimic that voice. That's just my voice, like, you know what I'm saying? Right. So now, did you get a chance to, like, um, talk with uh, sure Rough Riders? Um, um, did you get a chance to talk to Jada Kiss? Like, listen, that's mine. Uh, Phantom of the Beat. What was, what was Phantom of the Beat saying? Phantom of the Beats is a... <laughs> He's a coward. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I say that openly, like, I, no shade and no disrespect. I'm not even mad at him no more because Phantom of the Beast, right? We helped him do a lot of stuff and he never spoke up for himself. So I know he wouldn't speak up for us. And he owed us a lot of money from, I told y'all, we did like, we were writing, I did ghost writing for, for, for Heather Hunter, right? I wrote songs and shit. Okay. Um, the porn I wrote, star. Yeah, the porn star. Like, I, she was on my mixtape. She go back to my mixtape. She's on my mixtape skits saying all kind of nasty shit and shit like that. Like, Heather Hunter was mad cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? She was, she was rocking with us back then. Um, I used to write for her. I used to write for other artists. And a lot of that stuff I did, like, I did hooks for certain artists. Shouts to Philly's Most Wanted. Um, um, you'll hear them on my mixtape shouting me out and all that. Like, a lot of different people we work with, but I ain't necessarily get paid the bread I was supposed to get paid. Like, this was all through Phantom of the Beats. He the type of dude used to take us, like, instead of giving us the bread, he'd take us shopping. Like, mm. buy us a bunch of, buy us a couple pairs of sneakers, some outfits, and I guess that's his way of paying us the money he's supposed to pay me for writing verses and hooks and shit like that. But now nah, I want my bread, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? He'll take us to the strip club, right? in Manhattan and we all in the strip club and the nigga give us like four or five bins just to blow in the strip club. A nigga like me, I'm putting that shit in my pocket. I'm not throwing nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I'm putting the five in my pocket. I'm taking that home with me and I'm I'm investing that into whatever I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you right. know what I mean? So that was always, but he's a cheap creep. Like, you know what I'm saying? Son is a bozo. And he's my son at Aries. Aries ain't like that. We we giving, sharing people. We get money. Like, yeah. I don't know what happened to this dude, man. And again, I ain't even trying to throw him under the bus, but I got to tell a story. You do fuck shit, you deserve to be labeled as that. Like, you did your people's wrong, man. Like, my boys, when he was, he, he the type of dude, he was doing bad, right? And we all hustling at the time. None of us got no jobs or nothing. He's selling beats 50,000 at a time, 75,000, like, and blowing it and hitting rock bottom and then turning to the bros because we getting a little bit of money in the hood. We paying his rent, make sure that he's surviving in between these little 50,000, $100,000 pops and shit, you know what I'm saying? Right. right? But then when it comes time for niggas to need him, he ain't even there. Like, my boy go to jail, you know what I'm saying? My other boy, he get locked up, he come home, I, I ain't even want to hit some, but it was a time when we all needed some bread, right? right? So I hit the nigga like, yo, you know, we need some bread, bro. Like, ah, set something else so I could take some bread and I could go hit the other two bros with some bread, right? I know you got it, nigga. You selling beefs, right? And you owe us. Right. Niggas like, yo, meet me on the other side of the ferry. I got 1500 for you. I said, 1500 my nigga? Like, I never even went because if I would have went, I would have did something bad to him. Like, you know what I'm saying? I would have hurt him. Like, really bad. Like, it still took the 1500 but I would hurt him, bro. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just off of the disrespect, right? right? right. But I never went to get the money, and at that point, I just I just never fuck with dude again, bro. And I just watched him. I was even at a place, at the at the bad place I was in then, he had a big Phantom of the Beats chain. Shit probably, because he was getting money, that shit probably was worth like 60000 I right. I'd have took that shit. Right. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? If I'd have ran into him, I'd have took that shit. Right. But he hit rock bottom, he, he sold that shit. Son ain't never even had no bread. Every time I see him, he look like I need to give him some money. You know what I'm saying? So, right. like, God, not that I wish bad on nobody, bro, but when you do bad to people, man, 
Like, that's what shit happened. Like, be be good to people who good to you, man. That's what I want to say, too. Like, I'm a good nigga. I'll be good to a lot of y'all motherfuckers. <laughs> that's it. Sure. Y'all niggas don't appreciate me. Y'all females, niggas, this world, bro. Like, I'm a good nigga. Like, and appreciate good people out here because y'all be doing the most to, to devalue people and just, like, that shit is weird, bro. Like, that shit is weird. Like, do better by people who do good to you. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. So, um, you have a relationship with the Wu and you have a relationship with Inspector Deck. Yes. Right? We're going to skip over how you guys met and just go to artists working with another artist. Okay. Right? At some point, I know you said he stole a love letter. Yeah, but the word stole with him is different, right? Because okay. we was all in the same camp and we all in the same team. So all right, I, tell that story. I want to say, because the way he worded it to me was he was inspired by what I did, right? Okay. So when he said it like that, I respected it. And this is Inspector Deck, bomb atomically, right? Dude that gets write-ups in the mat. Dude that uh, other rappers idolize and look at him like he's the fucking GOAT. So... If he's inspired by something I did, then that makes me feel really, really fucking great. You know what I'm saying? It makes me feel like I'm something. I'm, I'm a really dope artist. But as that story happened, so we was all working out the same studio. We had a studio we all worked out of, an in-house studio, not open to the public, right? So I recorded a song called Love Letter. My boy um, TK was in there. We coming up with the concept for the song. Like, yo, the hook should go like this. Ah, uh, my boy TK, he good at harmonizing this shit. So once me and him come up with, like, the idea for the hook and we create the hook, he sing it. So now I write the verses. I write three verses. Shit is fire. Shit was inspired by, like, some real shit I was going through with a female at the time. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was writing her a letter. Like, it was a shorty I was with and things just didn't work out. And I, like, type dipped on her. Like, you know what I'm saying? And not even a laugh. No disrespect. Because it wasn't even, I felt bad. That's why I wrote the song. And I wanted to clear everything up in the song, like on why it didn't work out. And just show her that, you know, it wasn't because I don't fuck with her. It's just like, shit didn't work. You know what I'm saying? And if you listen to the song, you'll hear it. So when Deck heard the song, I guess he was feeling a similar way at that time. He might have had somebody he was dealing with that he, he, he was feeling that way about. Or the song just hit him, right? right. So it inspired him to do the song over, but what was crazy for me is like, nobody never called me, right? Nobody never called me and said, yo, we about to do the song over. I literally just came like the next day to the studio and I walk in and it's a version of my song playing <laughs> with Inspector the Deck. Like he's there and everything though, but they, intro they tell me as soon as I walk in. And it's like, at first like, as an artist, you know, you feel a little weird. I'm at the door listening to my shit. Like, you right. know what I'm saying? So like, before I go in the door, I can hear my hook playing my beat but deck verses so before the door opens shit my mind racing and shit like what the fuck like you know what i'm saying yeah. but once i go through the door and niggas explain it and like i said i was type on it like i inspired big bro i inspired inspector deck right to do something like you know what i'm saying like that that was like a uh a, a, a plateau for me in my career like you know what i'm saying not like a award or a trophy but a mental one for me like you know what i'm saying like I inspired one of the guys that y'all consider the GOAT. You know what I'm saying? So, right. like, I gotta be, I'm some kind of a GOAT too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you feel me? So, but I ended up jumping on the song anyway. Like, he did two verses and he was like, yo, do the last verse. Um, I jumped on it and it ended up going on his album. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so that wasn't like he stole the song, you know what I mean? But it was kind of weird, <laughs> like, just that situation. I never went through something like that. Like, you go to a studio, you record a song, then you come back the next day, and somebody else literally, like, did your song well, over. But, I mean, don't you think there should have been some type of principle to where he should have asked you, like, how you feel about me just taking this song? Or, you know I, do, I, mean? I do, but I think it happened so fast, right? Yeah. Again, we work in the same studio, so it had to be. I don't think that... I literally recorded it the day before. Right. So, and I got to the studio maybe five, six o'clock that day. So he probably got to the studio early, heard it, mm -hmm. and started working on it. And I'm saying maybe, this is what, I don't know, but right. this is what I'm assuming. I'm assuming he heard it, he was so inspired. Yo, bring the beat up, 
and just started writing. Because right. when I was there, they were still working on it. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? As I'm walking in through the door, it wasn't like it was finished. They were still, like, mixing and doing. I immediately started. Once I came in, I wrote my verse and did the third verse to the song. You know what right. I'm saying? A whole different verse than the two verses I already had. I mean, the three verses I already had on my version. And I was like, fuck it. If, uh, to me, right, I'm thinking, like, Deck want to use my song, right? He going to put it on his album. I'm on it. This shit gonna get me some light. It's a win-win. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm still putting out my shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna let him put out his shit first. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna put my shit out, my version out too, on my album. Like, you right. know what I'm saying? So, I wasn't really looking at it like, in that situation, because I kind of, ben I benefited something from it too. I was on the song. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, I got to at least get some prom some publicity, some promotion, you know what I'm saying? Some, some exposure off of it. You know what I mean? I wasn't mad at it. Right, right. Okay, so now, but hold on, he did re-release the song, and there's no no funny feelings or nothing, right? But I did feel kind of weird because he did a remix to it, and then on the remix album, like my verse wasn't on there, right? And I just felt like if it's my song, I should stay on any version of the song that's me, right? That's just my personal opinion. But you entitled to do whatever you want to do as an artist, right? Because I don't know, and even when they. When they when they released the song on the album, it didn't have my name, but I, I want to assume that was a typo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but shouts to the bro deck. Like me and bro in a good place right now. We actually talking about working on some new things. You know what I'm saying? It's been a roller coaster ride with that situation, but that's family shit. Like I always looked at deck like a big bro, even though before we worked together on music. I, once I met him in the hood, like he always was a cool dude. We had our situation where it might have got rocky. You know what I'm saying? But Again, family, people go through shit, you know what I'm saying? But most of the time, people are able to come back and fix those things and move forward, you know what I'm saying? Do you, do you get any royalties from um, the first um, love letter? That from you his version? Yeah. Nah, I never got paid for that shit. Aren't you supposed to? Yeah, I mean, to be... I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking into a lot, of, a lot of stuff. We spoke about this in the past interview, right? And, you know, I explained I, I probably didn't take care of a lot of things that I was supposed to take care of. And right. I'm doing better with that now. So I'm going back and figuring out a lot of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Now, let me ask you this. Personal question. Yes. At any point, because I remember back in the days, rappers used to say, listen, you can do two or three verses on my album, but you can have this song. At any point, did you say that to Deck? No, I never told nobody they could take my songs or they could use my songs. But yeah, I know I never, I never. But why wouldn't you pursue like royalty and you know get it in black and white? Like, cause you know th these dudes are getting paid, even if it's like you know two, two thousand, three thousand dollars a month. I ain't gonna say I never got no money from Deck. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just gonna say I never got no royalties, right? But I'm not gonna say Deck never gave me no bread. Right, that I understand. So that's probably why I didn't really stress all of that, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, at that time, I'm fucking with bro. If I needed something, like, bro was going to hold me down, like, you know what I'm saying? And not only that, like, I ain't even really had to ask. Like, we was going on tour with him. I was getting paid for the shows I was doing with him, like, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever situations that was money opportunities, some was making sure I was getting bread. He, he, he a fair dude, you know what I'm saying? He a good dude. Here's what, and and that in that sense, what were we speaking about for that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Here, here's what I think, right? Because it seems like a lot of artists, once they get the opportunity, right, to work with a newer artist, mm -hmm. they won't tell them about royalties. I'm talking like back in the days, back in the '90s, early 2000s. They won't tell them about royalties. You know what I mean? Because they want to make all the money. And I do kind of feel tell like them about that. the business side. I do definitely feel like that. I feel like. Most of the artists that I was around that I helped and I did things for, like, they ain't really put me onto the business and stuff. Like, they more just wanted to keep me around for whatever my talent was worth, what I could do for their career, whatever I could help, you know. And I'm not saying this about no particular person. I'm talking about, like, probably, I feel, a, I feel that way about 90% of the people I've been around I work with in music. Like, but I had to learn that, too. Like, I learned even now, like, I know people are gonna use you for what they can use you for, right? right? But the difference is now, I know what I need to get out of the situation. So it's like, if if it ain't a balance of you gonna get something out of this and I'm gonna get something out of it, then I ain't with it. Like you know what I'm saying? But I used to accept shit like that a lot 
just thinking like, oh, now nah, I'm going to get the exposure or I'm going to get this, like, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I, I, even with a lot of the albums I did, like, I was hoping that dudes would have been there to kind of teach me, like, you know what I'm saying, about the steps, because dudes already put out albums and, and did certain things, so dudes never really sat me down and told me the guideline. I learned pretty much by, like, trial and error, you know what right. I'm saying? Either, either you succeed or fail type shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? I learned on my own. You fall, scrape your knee, get back up, and learn not to trip over that shit again. Right. You ever feel like you want to approach these people like, yo, why you didn't tell me this shit? <sighs> At the space I'm in my life, yeah. I don't want to have that conversation because it might get me upset. Got you. Gotcha. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm cool with not having that conversation. I'm past that shit. Like, I'm cool with just figuring it out for myself. Like, cause I don't even feel like I'm gonna get the answers now, even wasting my time saying that. Like, it's just gonna be a conversation, that what I just said, waste of time. You know what I'm saying? A conversation, I'm not gonna get no closure. I'm not gonna get no money. Like, I'm, I could be doing something else that'll get me some bread with the time that I'm gonna waste talking to them about that. Right. That's okay. how I feel. Just bars are reality, right? On one of your songs, there's a line where you said, uh, I hit him with the gun and the gun went off. That's Shot. a real sh line. Okay. That happened right up the block from here. Tell that story. So, damn, why the fuck did we do that? <laughs> yo, <laughs> ignorance, and I'm not proud of none of this, right? Yeah. I don't even, yo, all right, it was over, it was over King Just. Okay. So King Just had an issue with somebody, and uh, one day we saw a dude, and King Just is, King Just a cool dude. That's my guy. He a cool yeah, dude. Shout out to King uh, Just. King Just, he not really, can I say this? Should I say this? If you want to edit it out later, King Just not really like a fighter. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. not saying he can't fight, but like my, my bro never had a bunch of fights in the hood and shit like that. But we always, King Just was that guy. Like, he was the one that they was putting on. So we all was like, anything, you say something smart to King Just, nigga, like, fuck is you talking about, right? So yeah. King Just had an issue with some dude, and we all jumped the dude, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, they, I don't mean to laugh, like, I, I don't wanna see, but we all jumped the dude, right? We young, we wild young, we all jumped him, and um, it's about like, probably 10 of us, maybe more, the whole, a bunch of us as rappers, Shallon Soldiers, mm -hmm. as a, like a rap group, we jumped this dude for King Just. Yeah. So now we just don't like him because of King Just. We don't even have no reason to not like him. But they was getting money down the block. And I, I explained that before. We was just looking for opportunities to take people money and shit like that. So we already didn't, King Just didn't like him. And now we had an excuse to go, you know what I'm saying, rob them. You know what I'm saying? Right. So we went down the block and that was our intentions to just go pull up, take their bread, keep it pushing. But when I, um, Dude that, dude that was beefing with King Just, I was ODing, like, instead of me just, like, backing out on him, and I get Statue of Limitations, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of me backing out on him and just be like, you know, give me the bread, I hit him with the pistol, but I had one in the head, mm -hmm. and the shit went off and took off a piece of his ear, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, a little piece, not a, ain't take his whole ear off, but to this day, like, he missing a piece of his ear and shit. Um, but I, I and, and we flee back up till we got away and all of that. Thank God, statute of limitations. Um, and I don't even think we got that much bread. Was, just, was was there a kid in the next room or the apartment across? Oh, you're talking about damn, bro. How you getting this information though? I listen, bro. I listen. How you get I damn? I mean, <laughs> damn. I'm kind of I listen. Damn. Some of my bros gotta stop talking. I listen. That's all I would say. But that's a fact too. That was a different situation. That was. I, I did, that was, that was the same kind of situation. It was a gun, one in the head, somebody was hit in the head, and the bullet went off, the gun went off, and the bullet went through the neighbors, the next door neighbors, and we know the neighbors. I felt fucked up. It wasn't even me, though. I, no, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm saying too much, right? But it, I wasn't even the person who, that, the other incident, I was, I'm, I'm responsible, right? right. But I, I'm not the person who hit the person that day. It's not for me to say who it was, right? I only right. can speak on my own shit. Um, but that day, nobody got hurt. It just, the bullet went off, it went through the wall, and it went through a neighbor's 
well, some people we fuck with. And like, it wasn't too far from like the kids and shit. And we fuck with these little kids. So I felt really, really bad about that shit, bro. Like, that shit had me mad nervous too. Like back then, mm -hmm. I left the state after that shit, bro. Like that shit, I thought I was going to jail. Like right. all the way to jail. Like, you know what I'm saying? For that right there. Um, I went out, my mom's, but my mom's always was like, I, I got family all over the United States type shit. So anytime it got hot for me, I, I got a great relationship with my mom to so where I could tell her that type of shit. Like, right. yo, I just did some dumb shit. I need a flight out of here. Yeah. And my mom just gave me a flight. She's sending me to my aunt in Cali. Yeah. Or she's sending me South Carolina or wherever the fuck she can get me out of here. She's doing that. Yeah. Like, I love, thank God. I love you, mama love. She yeah. always held me down, right? So I, I got low after that, you know what I'm saying? For like a month until niggas, I was, I'm speaking to niggas on the phone and niggas like, nah, that shit blew over. Right. Shit ain't about nothing. Like, then I came back. Right. And... Even that situation, it didn't even, I won't speak more into that, but that even created another dangerous situation from that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because what, what, what we had did had just created a lot of turmoil. You know what I'm saying? Shit, right. shit that even though the police situation I ain't had to deal with, I still had to deal with some shit in the street behind that. Like, you right. know what I'm saying? Um, and that whole situation was because we was in our building, we, we, we was in 240, uh, we, we, we basically like youngest dudes on the block in Park Hill at that time that had our own building. And there were some other dudes that we fuck with, but they start fucking with some other people that was in another building and they was getting money, not for us no more, but for somebody else in our building. So yeah. we was running, we was running in the, in their, in their apartment to tell them like, cut that shit out. Like, you know what I'm saying? And my man, the person who, you know what I'm saying? He was just frustrated with, you know what I'm saying? Like we was trying to give niggas a way out, but niggas was trying to talk kind of crazy right. and shut the fuck up. Right. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Um, but again, I ain't proud of none of that shit. That shit is all ignorant young shit, bro. Like, you know what I mean? But but for real, man, you be knowing your shit, bro. Like, that shit crazy from my mom's door to that. Like, it's a lot of wild shit. Thank God I'm I'm still here, man. Yeah, like, so I mean. After your mom doors got shot up, like what was the, uh, what would you do after that? I don't even know if I could speak about all of that. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It was go time, you know what I'm saying? It was like, right. nigga shot my mom's door, my nigga. Like, thank God my mom's wasn't there because it could have been my mom's opening that door, right. but it was me. Like, I opened the door. Right. Like, I was, because ignorant shit, I didn't even look through the people, my nigga. Like, I'm just, I wasn't thinking nobody coming to my career. Like, nobody did come to my career. And it's crazy because my mans had just took the pistol. Mm -hmm. So I, if I you, life is crazy because you never know how that situation would have turned out. But where I was living, I was living in Arlington at the time. In Arlington, they got them big steel doors. Like right. shits that police got to really had a big joint to bust your door down, pause. So when, when, when I opened the door, I seen dude, you know what I'm saying? Same dude that I told you from the seven year I seen him. Right. So as I see his face, I'm like, oh shit. I see the pistol, all that. It's low, like mm -hmm. this. As he's, as I see him and the door's open, it's like slow motion almost. I'm closing the door and it's like, I'm right here, I'm on the opposite side. Boom! And I see the fucking, the, the, the like, oh. it don't come all the way, but you see where it like, it ended, it ended to the door. Right. But I'm right there, it's like, nigga, that shit would've went through, it would've, it would've got me, but that door held it down. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Close the door, and then I'm like, damn, what the fuck I'ma do? Like, I gotta get out of here. I dead jumped out the window. Like, mm. my window on the first floor, like, yo, I gotta get out of here, I'm kind of gripping here. Right. I, I jumped out the window, all of them got the gates, hit the gate, called my mans, like, I need, you gotta bring that back. Right, right. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I felt horrible because that's my mom's crib, bro. Like, right. what if that was my mom's? Like, niggas could have shot my mom's, bro. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's like, serious. I could have been mama love, my nigga. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in a place where I value my life, right? And I value things that's going on in my life. And I value what I can achieve in my life, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be around nothing that could possibly risk me throwing all that shit away. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> all right. We out. And please leave that part. I love, I need that to be, that, I don't want to be a part of nothing that, like, that's powerful. I want my young people to hear that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying?
Got you, got you. I would love for that shit to end on that. That's beautiful. 